Hey friends, this is Michael from Walk Through the Bible. In this extraordinary time we find ourselves in, I, I suspect that we are all learning things. Learning things about ourselves, about our communities, about what is important, about our faith. One of the things that I've been learning from this short little book in the Old Testament entitled Habakkuk is what a crisis like the one that we're in now what a crisis teaches us about our need for Bible engagement. You know, if there was ever a verse in the Bible that proved to us that context matters, Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 5 might just be it. From summer camp t-shirts to church capital campaign slogans to mission conference themes, Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 5 has been used to inspire faith in God's indescribable power. And it certainly does sound hopeful and uplifting. For I am going to do something in your day, God says, that you would not believe, even if you were told. Unfortunately, that is probably not the verse that we want kids wearing across their chest at summer camp or pasted on church walls at mission conferences. The prophetic word is not one of hope and optimism, but rather of God's pending judgment by the way of the pillage and slaughter of his rebellious people at the hands of the Babylonians. The prophet Habakkuk, when we meet him in the beginning of this short little prophetic book that bears his name, Habakkuk is just distraught. There's the dialogue that forms the structure of the book between God and Habakkuk. And and it opens with Habakkuk's plea for God to do something. God's people were in rebellion against God. And in the mind of the prophet, God had been both still and had been silent in his response. Times were good. The enemies were at bay. The promised land was still flowing with milk and honey. Abundance was all around. And in their abundance, the people had forgotten their God, had neglected his commands, and begun to serve themselves. God was, in the mind of Habakkuk, God was like a distant father who kept letting the children run wild while he sat idly by with his arms crossed and watched. And so Habakkuk begins to question God. Verse 2 of chapter 1, the prophet says, How long, O Lord, must I call for help and you do not listen, or cry out to you violence and you do not save? Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Habakkuk's assessment of God, he was still, he was silent, doing nothing. (laughs) Yet unknown to the prophet, however, God was neither still nor silent. As the global power shift was moving away from the Assyrians to the more perverse, unjust, and more frightening Babylonians, God was, in fact, at work preparing to use the Babylonians to be his tool of judgment and punishment for the rebellion of his people. And then that gets us to chapter 1, verse 5. God says, look at the nations and watch. Be utterly amazed, for I'm going to do something in your day that you would not believe even if you were told. And God's response to Habakkuk's complaint continues as he outlines this dreaded pagan nation, which would be his tool for the judgment and the discipline of his people's rebellion. And so now, Habakkuk, his God is no longer still and silent. But now as God's words and plans simply make no sense. As Habakkuk responds, he questions God. Why why would you use a more perverse nation to punish your people? Why, Why not a more reasonable and justifiable discipline? How could Habakkuk explain God's actions? God's 
God's plans did not fit into this predictable box that the prophet had built for his God. (laughs) Have you been there? Do you feel maybe as if you're there now? When God's plans make no sense? Perhaps in in moments when you've been crying out to him, he's appeared still or silent. And you were left questioning why God wasn't acting or doing something about all that is wrong in your world. Or perhaps his plans just seemed wildly inconsistent with what you thought you knew or believed about God. The unpredictableness of God can be unsettling to the soul. Now, now don't get me wrong. God, God is unwavering to speak and to act in ways that are always consistent with his character. But sometimes, sometimes his plans have us bewildered. Bound by our own finite understanding, we, we can't fully grasp or explain his words or his deeds. And, and when we can't, we, we find ourselves in the company of the prophet Habakkuk, either accusing God of doing nothing or perhaps of doing the wrong thing. Does your world feel upside down and inside out right now? Are you, are you struggling to make sense of the perceived action or maybe the perceived inaction of God? Well, you're in good company. Change happens by the end of the book of Habakkuk. In fact, the prophet that we meet in chapter 1, accusing and questioning God, is not the same prophet that we meet in chapter 3 when this book comes to a close. But it, it's, not, it's not change because God relents and holds off the Babylonians. The change does not happen outside in the world, but rather inside in the prophet. God's gracious dialogue with the prophet helps him see what he has always known. Though God's plans may be unpredictable, God is always at work for his glory and for the good of the people he loves. The signal to what brings the change in the prophet, what brings the transformation in Habakkuk, from from questioning to confident faith, the the signal to what brings that change is, is found in how he begins the final prayer in chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse 2, he says, Lord, I have heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds, Lord. Repeat them in our day. In our time, make them known. And in the final chapter, in these verses that follow, the prophet simply begins to recall the mighty acts of God. And in remembering how God has acted on behalf of his people in the past, a shift begins to happen for the prophet in the present. Hope rises in the crisis. Not not when the crisis relents, but when we remember how God has always been faithful. The book of Habakkuk, and my my Bible here is just two pages. (laughs) It's a short story, but it's a dramatic shift. And the shift has absolutely nothing to do with the change in the circumstances. But looking back gave the prophet a perspective on the present. Looking back on God's 
constant faithfulness to always work for his glory and for the good of his people gave the prophet a resolute confidence that even in the present chaos, even in the present crisis, God would be faithful. And if that's true, if that's true, then then I think there may be a couple of things that would be really helpful for us to be doing in this crisis today that we're facing. First, remember, for Habakkuk, hope, hope was birthed in his memory of God's faithfulness through the generations. Can you remember? Remember a time where you didn't see a way out? When the circumstances seemed unbearable? A time when darkness surrounded? When there was a crisis of faith? And then, and then God met you. God proved himself faithful. I mean, is there a moment, even as you hear me talk, a moment that comes to mind right now? Our our memories are powerful things in in a season of crisis that can be a wellspring of hope to, to remember that we serve a God who even to you and to me has always proven himself faithful. Remember, but here's my main thought, we need to read. Read. I can think of no greater way to bolster your faith for times of crisis and uncertainty than to have a regular diet of feasting on God's word. See, when we read this book, this Bible, we, we read generations of stories of God's faithfulness when the world seemed to be unraveling. We read how God is always at work even when we can't see him. We read book after book, chapter after pe- chapter, page after page that God is unwavering in his steadfast love for his people. We read that in the highs and in the lows, that when all seems right and when all seems wrong, God is unchanging. He is for us. He is good and he is kind. He is always present, always working for his glory and for the good of his people. See, if we if we could engage in, if we could feast on this book, much more than than we consume news stories and health reports and financial outlooks, if we could engage and feast in God's word, then, then the same thing that happened to Habakkuk might just happen to us. We, We recall God's mighty acts. We stand in awe of his deeds. We we remember that he is always faithful. And the stories that tell of God's past faithfulness produce hope in this present crisis. This this crisis that we're in, it, it may not be relenting anytime real soon. And so my word of encouragement to you is to remember and to read. Bible reading and Bible engagement are, are always needed. But perhaps, perhaps this crisis reminds us just how needed they are. So find your Bible and read and read and read and read. Because when we read this book, God's word, the stories 
generation after generation after generation of God's faithfulness gives us perspective on this crisis that we can't find anywhere else. And it gives us hope. It gives us hope, even when the crisis doesn't relent. So friends, feast on this book. And just like our friend Tabakic, let it change.